Good morning, welcome to Planet Mojo. Today I'm going to show you a few details on the addition that we're putting on this spring. Before I do that, I promised to show some of the details on this uh, wood stove's chimney specifically this big bracket here see we have this uh this is osb and there's a wood frame inside of it actually i can show you that if i want to there's the whole stack for you that that is our exact wood stove it's a durango oh durango something no i think that's it just durango uh here's where we clean out we use a uh, a drill and it's a brush that we push up here push it all the way up to the top this is the cricket that keeps snow build up from there we actually don't need it that much because the the wind comes towards it this way and it blows the snow right off the roof for the most part but anyways here is what it looks like on the inside and it's not showing on on here. I just it's a uh, just how I built it. I framed this out a little bit, and the there's a vent from the air to air heat exchanger that goes through the floor here. It comes into this chase, comes up and goes out into the office upstairs. That uh, grabs some of the heat from the from the chimney uh, when we're reusing the stove. We don't use the stove very much anymore because the house is so so well insulated that it gets way too hot and you have to close some windows. So we're probably gonna get a smaller stove, a little railroad pot belly, something like that for when we do wanna use the heater. Um, but anyways, let me show you the, it's actually not in this model, so I'll have to go back. Oh, there's the addition there. Get back in there. For some reason, and I can't remember right now, I'd have to dig up my notes, but this is a doubled truss right here because there's a stairway right here. So this stone covered chimney sits directly on this double joist or double rafter from the truss but the other side could not sit on this next one so what I did was built it out and put this big I think it's a 3 8 inch L bracket in there and bolted it it it's bolted right up into the into the unit itself. We get high winds here. Uh, the house had to be built to 120 mile an hour winds. So everything is built very well. I glued and screwed all the panels on the house and sealed all the joints. And then it has foam on the outside. It's, uh, uh, what is that? Building Science. If you go to buildingscience.com there's a lot of the stuff we did on this house. We have modern framing and the whole nine yards. It's very well built. But anyways, I've talked about this in previous videos, but in the upstairs area where I'm working, you can see here's the wall I just put in. This is a remnant. I, I should take it out of the model, but I don't really don't uh, don't have the time. So... I'll just make it invisible. This is the wall I just put in. There's actually a wall over here too. Um, we split this into two rooms because it was supposed to be one big open room for my office. I work on uh, on the computer. I do. Uh, we own an engineering company, software engineering, a small company. So do a lot of work on the computer. So. But now we're using it as bedrooms, so 
we split it in half. But anyways, here here's the stuff I was working on. There's a mini split here, and there was going to be one here. But now we've changed plans again, and we have the one mini split here, and I'm in the process of running the pipe down through here. Then behind the bathroom, there's a couple chases. One is for the air-to-air -air heat exchanger. One is for the uh, mini split. It's just a pipe back in there that runs outside of the house. So I can pull the old, I have a mini split line going through there right now and the unit's mounted right here. That's gonna come off. And the new one, the line will run through there and run down the house and the mini splits will be out here, right around the corner right here, I believe. So, where was I at? Okay, the, back to this. So that's the construction that I'm doing right here. There's a sub panel and I had planned on putting a cabinet in here. Whether that happens or not, I don't know. Um, but this sub panel is actually in place already. So is this switch box. And I was going to put a pipe in here as a chase for the mini split lines. But I, what I did is put a ramp in there. So I can actually squeeze my fat ass into this opening here. And I can see all the way up into here. Um, so I can, if my refrigerant lines need replacing at a future date, I can get in there and pull them out. I should be able to do it right just leaning into here, but if need be, I can get in there and yank them out. And now that this mini split is not part of the picture, I have vents. We're going to put circulating fans to circulate the the air in the house in a continuous loop. That's always been part of the plan, but it just modified how I'm going to do it. And the modification is to have a vent grill here on the inside of this room and another one outside up at the top. And what that does is a lot, it gives me an opening in this wall where I can uh, feed lines. Sorry about that. The highlighting should be turned off. It gives me an opening around this bend where I can feed lines. This is just a small little hole to get at the mini split. So between the two, I should be able to fish stuff through here if I need to replace it. For the install, I'm just going to leave the drywall off until it's until it's done. So that's that part of it. So as I've said before, this all I got to do is slice this drywall right here, pull the drywall off and the insulation and unscrew this lower part. And this becomes a door opening. Well, I have to take the window out too. Uh, I believe the window should be just screwed in. Hopefully it is. But if it's nailed, I'll have to pull the nails. Um, I think... I'm not sure if I put that one in personally or not, or if my son did. But either way, the window comes out and then will be used somewhere else on the property. And you will walk out onto a wooden deck here on the addition. So this is a 16 by 20 flat top addition. There'll be scuppers right here. You can kind of see this right here, if you can follow the mouse. It's a engineered joist with a taper, um, quarter inch to the foot taper on the top cord. You can buy these engineered and, and uh, built like this. So you don't have to do any taper work. This just gets screwed to the top of the... Uh, modern framing so you'd have one on top of each of the of the joists here or choice of the studs one at the top of each one of these studs and then it'll have uh, plywood over that and then a PVC 
uh, decking. Then it uses the bison system, which are, you know, they're adjustable like pedestals that go right onto the roof and the deck framing sits into those. The deck framing itself will be squares of probably white oak. They sell, the company that makes the bison system sells their own squares and it's Ipe, I believe. The area that we're in uh, is logged constantly and there's a lot of oak in this area. So we're planning on using white oak, which will be pretty much permanent as a deck. So what else about this? Oh yeah, it's got four windows here. It'll have four windows here. I didn't draw them in, so it's a little more clear while I'm playing around with it. Door on each side. Uh, which will have screen doors for the summer or the ability to have screen doors in the summer. They kind of roll into the unit. They're pretty nice. Uh, this is just a place where we're, we're going to be able to sit in the summer and get out of the sun when it's, you know, pushing a hundred. I will likely, we have the exposed rafter tails here. I want to do something with like a pergola here that kind of matches this and then uh, grow grapevines on the top of it or probably just a single Concord grape on top of this to block the sun in the summer. Uh, then in the winter it won't block it and we'll get sunlight in here for uh, some heat gain. So this back part this is a parapet wall, though the wall ends right here at this bottom line. And then the top will be uh, iron, well not iron, but a steel uh, railing um, going from the top of the parapet up to whatever height I need to get it. I'm pretty sure it's 36 inches. So you will be standing a little bit below the door level is the level of the wood deck. And then this will come up to 36 inches. Then this opening here will lead to a little temporary stairway going down the back. When we do the next block, there's two more here, which are both bedrooms. This will be used as a temporary bedroom until we get this next one done, which will be a permanent bedroom. So... Um, this will be a stairway down until we build the next block, at which time it'll be a couple stairs down to a flat roof on this section of the addition. It'll be the same type of roof, and then it'll have a little stairway going down to another section. It, it might be three, four stairs, I'm not sure. It can only go so far because this opening will be reframed as a stairway as well to come through and down into the uh, the addition here. It'll actually have to go right here. See, I'm not not through designing this yet. So this this would be the two. There'll be two short stairways coming down into the rooms here, and then this had a another stairway going down to another level, but I don't think we're going to get that ambitious. See, we're doing this as we have, you know, the funds to do it without knocking ourselves out. So one step at a time. We don't want to have a big mortgage to have hanging over our, our heads. You never know what the hell is going to happen to the economy. So everything's super insulated. We can actually heat the house right now with the the house that we have, we can heat it with less than a quart of wood a year. And we have more than enough wood just clearing our roads. So we don't have to buy wood. We don't have to purposefully go out and collect wood. Whatever we clear from the road is usually enough to heat the house for a whole winter. And if we needed to, there's tons of uh, dead, dry trees out in the woods. I can always get 
if, in case of an emergency, I can always get dry wood. But anyways, uh, for now, this is on a slab. The house is on a slab as well. It's a frost protected oh, FPFS. It's a shallow foundation um, and it's heave proof. Um, I'll go into that in detail when we start doing the work on this. But it's a frost protected shallow foundation. It's been in use in like Nordic countries for many, many, many years. It works just fine, no heaving or anything like that. It uses the, it traps the earth's heat so that it never freezes underneath the house. There's like wings of insulation underneath the ground out here. But again, back to this. So this will have a wood deck on top of it. It'll connect to the house. Uh, this stage, it will just have a hallway going to the two different, you know, the two different yards of the house, a place where you can come in and just, uh, maybe we'll put some coat hooks or something here, a wall, and then this will be used as a bedroom temporarily. And then when the next part's built, the wall will come out and everything in here will come out. And we are going to put a mud sink in here, or it'll be a mud room slash breezeway we will put in a utility sink and the hot and, wa hot and cold water will terminate right here and then run back into a ba uh, bath in here. But it'll, the unit will be right here. We have on-demand um, water heaters, or we have one right now, but the next one will be right here on this wall, right above a utility sink. So we, w we need an area where I can come in because I'm always filthy and wash up and stuff before going into the house you know get this stuff off my boots and all that so the temporary wall will come out and then this will be just a nice little breezeway going to a couple bedrooms and all of the areas of the house are independently controlled as for heat and stuff so these can be left uh, nice and cool during the day and heated at night and then when you're not using the rest of the house that can be cooled way down so it's a very energy conscious house so there's a, not a lot to the build on this but it does use modern framing which I'll show you um, and tapered I th I'm pretty sure it's called a how truss tapered trusses and it'll there's a lot of little details especially with the vinyl and the scuppers and then we're going to have scupper drains running down on one of the sides i believe it'll end up going on this side but that's not a hundred percent nailed down yet also one last thing in the hallway here there is a window framed out. You can see the edge of this addition goes right here. So centered in that, there's actually a hole in the framing waiting for a window. What we want to do is have, it's, it was originally designed for a stained glass window. I'm not 100% sure that's what we'll do, but that's what I'm thinking. I'd like to have a stained glass window in the stairway that that was kind of a tradition with craftsman houses and i'd like to like to do that so i don't know you could probably see it now so this would have like a dragonfly we got a lot of dragonflies here in the summer a, a stained glass dragonfly with some wildflowers and prairie grasses and stuff here so all i gotta actually do the the drywall right now is scribed where this is. You can't really see it until you get really close. So all I have to do is take a razor knife and cut deeper and this will pop, the drywall will pop out and then I'd pull out the insulation and then right now there is just house wrap on the outside of this. So I can go take that out in a heartbeat and put in that window. I got to find a, a stained glass person that can do it for me 
and hopefully I can find somebody on YouTube that can do that as a project. So that's it. Uh, the back of the house is in house wrap right now. That will come off because the entire back of the house is uh, foamed, has two inches of foam on it. So what we'll do is take off that house wrap and put the siding on. It doesn't need the house wrap on there. That's just on there to protect the foam from the UV rays. So we'll take off that house wrap and have the siding finished. And then this siding, the house is dark blue with black trim. This addition will be nearly black, a uh, flat board trim. It's pretty interesting. I, I'll Hopefully I'll be able to link to a video that shows it. Uh, the stuff that they have is just, I think it's heat treated popple. Heat treated poplar and they have it on the flat as a rain screen. We're, we're probably going to do similar to that, but we will likely have it black. And then these two back parts would be blue again, so it would be a black, uh, a black center part and a blue front and back part. So that's our spring project along with the Savannah restoration that's ongoing as well as a bunch of other projects. I got the vineyard and all that other stuff. So if you want to see the progress on both the design of this and the building of it, uh, stop back often. I'm going to have this fleshed out with uh, actual framing and stuff shortly. So subscribe to the channel, then click on the update icon so you're notified when we post new videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day.